Our little economic tidal wave has not been kind to our next panelist. When I owned Caviar Aficionado magazine, he burnished his reputation as one of America's leading gourmet food critics. But when I sold the magazine, I was aghast to see the new owners gut on a fine publication and reintroduce it as a fast food tabloid called Eater's Digest. Now the poor chap barely ekes out a living reviewing such distasteful cuisine as Whoppers and Chalupas. From beef wellington to beef jerky, oh how the mighty have fallen. I give you the dismayed gourmet. Well, thank you for rubbing it in, Mr. Howell. Forgive me for bemoaning my erstwhile status as an elite gourmand, that culinary pedestal having been yanked from under my feet like Houdini's tablecloth from in underneath the candelabrum. But as average citizens can less and less afford fine dining, the market for reviews of four-star restaurants has vanished, and likewise a market for reviews of low-budget gruel has emerged. I am the dismayed gourmet. I have supped at the finest tables in Paris and New York, yet due to our flaccid economy, a landscape of palatal ruination has been visited upon me. I have lately been forced to review foodstuffs that traditionally would never have been allowed near the intricately nuanced receptors of taste that once enabled me to reap a small fortune critiquing world-class cuisine. Then so it was that I found myself suffering the undignities of that which the layman refers to as a fast food. My disposition towards the term has always been that if you were in such a hurry, why not just purchase this fast food and uh, throw it directly into the toilet, say? us both a little time. Uh, yes, I should have known better than to consume anything referred to as a number two, but duty called both before and shortly after my wretched experience with the Egg McMuffin. As I peeled back the slimy wax paper, I was horrified to discover a jiggling egg matter blanketed by a porous rectangle of freakishly orange cheese and two orb-shaped slabs of stale bread that had been festering under the heat lamp longer than George Hamilton in February. <laughs> the urge to regurgitate was quelled only by the volcanic eruption of mucus that surged through my sinuses and the esophageal canal. The portent of my next bowel movement, surely the only moments away, was my sole comfort in this most egregious culinary writing assignment. And just a fortnight later, I was assigned to render my expertise on that most vile convenience store staple, the 7-Eleven Corn Dog. While this assignment was utterly antithetical to my upper echelon Epicurean orientation, rest assured that I am a professional and that my assessment will be unassailably frank. Ha! That's a corn dog joke for those of you taking notes. <laughs> the foundation of this twisted design is the hot dog, essentially ground pig or beef gristle mixed with facial meat and levels of bovine and porcine fecal matter deemed acceptable to the FDA. This repository of rejected animal flesh is then rolled in corn flour, fried in hot oil, and impaled upon a stick. 7-Eleven corn dogs bear the additional disadvantage of ha having lain congealing under heat lamps as well. As I lifted the abomination to my lips, the pungence collected in my nostrils and charged through my sinuses. It was a harbinger of the horror about to come, but I knew that if I did not suffer through at least a single bite of the damnable concoction, I would lose all credibility with my readership. My tear ducts emptied themselves of their stinging brine. My glottis collapsed and my stomach orchestrated an uncanny replication of Mary Lou Retton's tumbling routine in her performance at the 1984 Summer Olympia. I vomited. I regurgitated through my nose. I regurgitated. I felt like a Play-Doh accessory, processing an amorphous substance through a double-barreled aperture, a kind of two-stranded spaghetti maker, producing a yellow and pink child's delight onto my shirt, jacket, and ascot. Such are the humble travails of a once revered Epicurean connoisseur. Forgive me, dear audience, for subjecting you to this next panelist. When I made his acquaintance just moments ago in the green room, he regaled me with his nausea-inducing recipes for macaroni and skunk, 
porcupine chops and flattened armadillo on the half shell, please welcome yeah. the self-described American redneck savant, Mr. Wow. Billy Bakhtifus. Mr. Goldman, and if you like them other dishes, you should try some of my granny's five alarm salamander pudding. <laughs> yep. I've got all kinds of recipes for savory spam pot pie and down home delicacies like uh, kung pao chipmunk, egg stuffed chinchilla, and uh, refried gizzard. Tastes just like chicken, innards, but you can feed a family of five for 59 cents. <laughs> nowadays you gotta nowadays you gotta tap the old noggin to think up new ways to get a hold of them dollar bills. Why well, I, I was hoping maybe that Mr. Howell fella would give me a job. Why well, I heard he pays a man top dollar just to clean up after Mrs. Howell's pack of designer she wow wows and shih tzus. Maybe I can uh, breed him with my own dog and make a bundle. He's a three legged uh, Appalachian pit bull uh, the Appalachian pincher. And lately, he's been all over the neighborhood trying to hump start the economy with his stimulus package. But seriously, man, lately times have been so tough that I had to sell some of my prize sports collectibles on eBay like this here valuable O.J. Simpson playing card. You know, hard times hit O.J., and now he's doing hard time. But at least he found a way to get three square meals and a roof over his head. Yeah. Well, just imagine what that double murdering some bitch could accomplish by now if his life of crime hadn't been interrupted by a Hall of Fame football playing career. Yeah. Oh, just came by my shack one night trying to, try to pistol whip me from my OJ card. Oh, wait, I had to run him off with my shotgun. He <laughs> looking over my shoulder, though, because you never know when or where OJ Simpson may strike next. Of course, like a lot of people these days, I'm stocking up, excuse me. I'm stocking up on genuine Barack Obama memorabilia. Man, I've been selling a lot of these here commemorative paper plates. These are selling quick. And this here official genuine used limited edition Barack Obama hubcap. It's a dang, dang collector's item at $9.99.95.99. <laughs> Well, I got my Barack Obama abdominal workout video. Been shaped in no time. And, uh, well, we got the Obama bobblehead dolls, too. Some lots of these. And, of course, you gotta try my official Barack Obama moonshine. It's just perfect for numbing the pain of the economic meltdown in your soul. Well, you know, on election day, President Obama, he told us that uh, it's time to put aside childish things. You know, like, you know, like fancy gas station hot dogs and predatory subprime uh, trailer loans, for example. You want my financial advice? It's the same as always. Don't invest no money in nothing. Well, it's like that little, a little Indian fella Gandhi used to say. Don't get yourself mixed up in them voodoo economics or pretty soon you end up wearing a man diaper and begging for salt. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Bunch of wealthy weasels from Washington and Wall Street wrecks the dang economy, and now us taxpaying rubes is supposed to bail them out? Well, I ain't no Ivy League economist, but it's starting to sound to me like the new economic paradigm is brother can you spare a dime? <laughs> well, that's all from me. Billy Buck Chief is American Redneck Savant. It's time to introduce the next panelist. Now, where I come from, you don't see too many people flashing around and, you know, flashy shirts and gold necklaces, but my papa taught me I ought to judge a man not by the color of his hideous fake orange spray tan, but by the content of his character. Please welcome semi-retired mafia goon turned cable TV news pundit Frankie Gold Chains. Hey, where's my freaking notes here? All right, at these prices, you know, I can't be asked to memorize everything. Hey, thank you, Billy Buck freaking Tifus. How you doing? Frankie Gold Chains here. Let me tell you something. This economic meltdown's got my freaking balls in a vice, I tell you. 